Thank you for joining me on Side by Side today. Today we're going to be reading and thinking about chapter 5 of Proverbs. As with the help of the Lord Jesus, we try to understand just what it's saying to us in our 21st century. It deals with one subject, and I think it's a very important subject. And I come to this subject understanding that there's been a great deal of pain in many people's lives as a result of it, and also a great deal of joy. And I think that's the difference that there often is between doing the right thing and the wrong thing, a great deal of pain and a great deal of joy. The Bible, when it gives us boundaries and when it gives us direction, does so because it wants us to find life. And this has been the whole idea behind Proverbs. That's what he says at the beginning. My son, pay attention to my wisdom, and then you will show discernment, and then your lips will express what you've learned. The outcome of listening will be something constructive. In this case, it's a word to his son in regard to the temptations that exist in sexual in a sexual nature. I think it could apply to men and women. And I think men and women are both equally guilty of the question of morality. We all maybe find ourselves at different seasons of life. And that, of course, was something we've got to take on board here. You may be young, in which case this may have a particular emphasis in one angle and one way in your life. You may be much older and you have a different temptation through these particular issues. But we all must I think, take seriously what Scripture is saying. Maybe that by learning again these things and listening to this, we gain a sensitivity for one another and a sensitivity to pray for one another. And maybe some who are much older will be praying much more specifically for younger in this regard. So, what we have here, we are given something of the process that happens when a person falls into temptation of a sexual nature. Listen to the verse 3 and following. For the lips of an immoral woman are as sweet as honey, and her mouth is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is as bitter as poison and as dangerous as a double-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps lead straight to the grave. Some other translations talk about that her lips are like the dripping of honey. And I know that when I've been keeping bees for these many years now, that when I take a, a super, as we call them off, with a honeycomb in it, and I open it and take off the cappings, then the honey starts to drip. It's very hard not to put your hand out and want to get it. It just drips slowly and very alluringly. The idea of the, the oil, that oil, that's smooth oil, I think it's easy to sense something just flowing out smoothly. It doesn't make any sound. It's it's very alluring and very attractive. And that's the sort of process that's being talked about here. And I think that it helps us to understand the powerful forces that we're dealing with. Because temptation to, of a sexual nature is really powerful because what it is, it's a good thing, it's a God thing that's been twisted around in the wrong way. You don't have to go out of your own way, as it were, to engage in sexual temptation. You just have to follow the wrong direction with something that God has given you that's ex that is particularly good. At the end of it all, we read here, there's a bitter, bitter end in this, like it's as bitter as poison. The honey and the oil taste, the honey tastes sweet, but it ends up very bitter. I'm reminded of a passage in Samuel uh, where David's son Amnon has been tempted by his half-sister Tamar and he's so taken up with her beauty and the desire to go and sleep with her that he lets it take control of his life and he forcibly gets her to come and sleep with him. The end of that is that he then hates her with a hatred that's so profound and powerful and it leads to so much misery. Absalom becomes involved in other son, which means then that David doesn't deal with the issues that arise there and ends up with David having to leave the city and there's oh so many other things all flow out of this. So when we read here that in the end she is as bitter as poison, as dangerous as a double-edged sword, I think 
That is a great way of describing sexual temptation and where it can lead us. There are always consequences for every sin, and usually the consequences are not just in one direction. They flow out in many directions. They affect many different people. And there are many people's lives today that are still living with the consequences of sexual temptation that was not checked and it has gone into the next generation and the next generation and caused so much pain. And yet, in the midst of all of this, it's lovely to see that there's still hope. In verse 10, 11 and 12, we read there uh, about, especially verse 12, there's the person who comes to the point where they're sad and grieved because the outcome is painful, and then they say, How I hated discipline, if only I had not ignored all the warnings. Why did I not listen to my teachers? Why did I not pay attention to my instructors? I have come to the brink of utter ruin, and now I must face public disgrace. You see, there were teachers, there were instructors, there were warnings, there was discipline. And you see, that is all a kind of a, that is a kind or a a means of kindness to to, to this young man, there there are people around. There must have been those who had given in, just like the, the, the advice that's been given here. But he didn't pay attention to it. And I think it's really challenging, maybe even right now. Maybe somebody's listening to me and, and you're at a place in your life where you've maybe through this lockdown, you've been more engaged in, the, in maybe in the screens and some of the things you've been watching or engaged in or reading you wouldn't do if it had been in another situation. I don't know what your story is today, but I'm sure there are lots of situations that we're all tempted with. There's no one who's not tempted, so don't be embarrassed about admitting that you are tempted. And advice may just be simple. I remember reading about a a girl who was getting on a train every day to go to her work in London, commuting, and she got friendly with a young man in the train. They were in the same compartment every morning. And she was talking to her pastor about this. And the pastor simply said to her, well, you know, my advice is just, why not just change trains? Sometimes that's all you need to do. When you become aware that somebody's presence is stirring more than it ought to, they're creating in you an anticipation that you realize this is not a healthy thing, just change trains. Maybe it's as simple as that. The other thing we can do, of course, which is to is really important is is to do what it says here is to nurture the relationship that you're in with your own spouse it says here drink water from your own well share your love only with your own wife why spill the water of your springs in the streets having sex with just anyone isn't it just so simple but it's not always easy and it requires that Both people become committed to working hard to nurture their marriage, and especially to nurture their marriage in the area of sex. I think there's uh, sometimes we we become so afraid to talk about these things, and yet they are really important. God says they're important. That's why he has included these things in the Bible. Marvellous advice and marvellous wisdom finishes with a wonderful prayer for blessing. Verses 18 to 20. Now I've never prayed this prayer at a wedding. I'd love to do it. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it yet, but let me just read it to you. Let your wife be a fountain of blessing for you. Rejoice in the wife of your youth. She is a loving dear, a graceful doe. Let her breasts always satisfy you. May you always be captivated by her love. I think it's a marvellous prayer of blessing for for a marriage. And I think it's marvellous that we can see this in the scriptures. The lovely thing here is just to see how much God celebrates this gift of sexuality. Jesus steps into lots of situations in New Testament where there's been sexual dysfunction with a gentle and a truthful grace. The woman at the well in John 4, the woman caught in adultery in John 8. And so this becomes a time for us to pray for one another, to stop pretending that we're above these things, to start celebrating the beauty of sex in marriage, to walk away and make changes when we know there's something not right, and to share these things with somebody else that who can pray for us. 
and be an encouragement to us. So God bless you today.